Hello, it's Philo. It's Philo. Welcome to Philo. Uh, this is me. I'm Amber Greenlee. Um, we have Robin today. Say hi, Robin. Hi. Uh, and, and we have Kay Kirch today. Uh, way back yonder in the olden days of uh, uh, cable access television, uh, Philo was a show that we did on MTN. And um, Kay was one of the fellow artists I did the show with. And uh, Hamill gave me his blessing to continue the show. And I thought uh, one good way of doing that was by including some of the, the artists that were with us before. And so um, welcome to the show, Kay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Good um, to be here. Uh, we also have uh, Archimedes on cat cam. Ah, and, okay. And then um, this is uh, where we left off last week with the tribunals map because Kay hasn't been here for the last few weeks. I'm going to do a recap today. And so, um, let's do this. Let's go over in here. And then, um, this is, uh, my website. And then I got the, uh, file pages. We're a little behind, uh, the story with the file pages on the website because I'm doing the panels one at a time and then i'm doing the pages nine at a time so um philo's reading comics philo's so happy he jumps for joy there is soup on the stove that philo forgot about he saves the pasta before it's overcooked philo answers the phone so the dog eats the pasta the dog is happy philo trips over comics trying to get pasta he falls on the counter the knife tumbles the knife stabs the carpet scaring philo <laughs> Uh, the folly knife slices Philo's fingers. The dog snags the fingers, runs out of reach. A panicked Philo, fingers regenerate. Philo's shocked that they regrow. The dog chokes on Philo's fingers. Uh, the dog vomits up the fingers that transform into a new Philo. Philo is surprised by his doppelganger. The new Philo's mission is to make pasta. Philo's cool with it. He names him <laughs> Otis. And then, uh... Philo's partner comes home and discovers Otis. This is uh, Bluto. Uh, Philo tries to smooth things over with Bluto. Bluto gets the idea to make more Philos. Otis and the dog come to the rescue. The dog attacks. Bluto is attacked while Philo watches on. After the dust settles, there is a problem. Bluto levels up. He reaches enlightenment. And so I think... Yes, uh, the puma from La Laguna is going to save you Suna. So he becomes a puma and is given a goofy theme song. The dog slinks away from the puma. The puma starts eating the pasta. Philo and Otis try to save the pasta. There is absolute chaos. They become a single one bean. They become the kaiju, Sentagogue. They destroy specifically the government funded buildings. And Godzilla is not <laughs> impressed like a disappointed mother. And so that's, that is where we left off with the pages. Um, showing you where we are in the story Reality. right now. Yeah, yeah, this is the, uh, the page I'm still building as soon as it loads up. And so Godzilla whips out the Kaiju Union rules. Kaiju bring Philo in front of the Kaiju Tribunal. And, and I just have to zoom in on this panel because this one took me forever to draw. This is Slattern from Pacific Rim, and then there's Godzilla, and you can see Mothra back here. Here's Gamera and King Kong. And um, uh, there's a trial. Sentagog's defense lawyer burst through the door. Manila and Godzilla have their opening statements. Outside an ice cream truck's music splits Sentagog apart due to hunger, and the tribunal is mad at Godzilla for wasting everyone's time. So that's that's where we are in the story. Um, and uh, I am going to turn this off and turn this on. And what happens next? <laughs> I know it's a lot. It's a lot to consider. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, uh, uh, they, they disband at the end here. And so uh, we have Otis, we have uh, Bluto as the Puma, we have Philo and the dog that are now all separate creatures, yet they are in this Kaiju court. 
So uh, what what happens? What are their reactions? Hmm. Silence. I feel like we have to get rid of Bluto because he's just an unnecessary malice. He's an unnecessary malice. Well, do you think going back to it, he want he he thought like Philo was cheating on him with Otis, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you think he'd still think that? You gotta keep a no, villain because around. he's been enlightened. He has been enlightened. That's true. But so is he still selfish? I feel like he is. Can you be enlightened and selfish at the same time? Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so if he's enlightened, could, could he be maybe... enlightened, selfish, and hungry for that pasta? What, could be hungry for the pasta. Uh, maybe he's he's been the pasta is long gone. The puma ate it all. Yeah, yeah, the puma did eat it. So, okay, so Pluto the puma did which eat is Pluto again. technically. So he already yeah. had the pasta. So puma poop. Since I'm eternally maybe years old. there's a turnaround <laughs> in the trial and somebody in their Kadra gets arrested because they're in the courthouse. <laughs> Hmm. Well, <clears throat> so they they could be arrested, but would they be arrested for like trespassing in kaiju court because they're no longer kaiju? No, for destruction of all the government buildings. But that was kaiju court, and they're no longer kaiju. So this would just this would be like the government yeah. But the, wouldn't the humans them? be bitter? Don't you think the humans would be a little bitter that all their buildings got destroyed? Okay. Okay, I can I can get behind that. So uh suddenly the, the humans are bitter that that all of their buildings got destroyed. Don't or you could see the humans are bitter over the destruction. Yeah, I could do that. Uh let me let me shrink it down a little bit. If you need it to be shorter, I'm just saying. No, I, I think that that's not too long. Cool. Okay, the humans are bitter that all of their buildings got destroyed. So, um, going to my sketch layer. Do you want to show them, like, surrounded by police? I, uh, I have to tell my Huion to point to the right screen okay because it was pointing to the wrong screen there we go okay where was i there we go so, so okay they should be surrounded by a police yeah i thought that would be a good idea okay what do you think Kay? hmm i think that's a good idea yeah because we have to have something about the, all the government buildings were destroyed so okay so I'm gonna do like, like the comic book cover here where everybody's backs are to each other as like they're surrounded by the villains. You know, we'll have yeah. we'll have Bluto in the back here. Okay. Okay, you've known Amber for almost 14 years. Yep, that'd be yep. about 14 years. About well, wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. 14 years ago was 2010. You and I met in 2000. Seven, two thousand eight. Actually, you're right. Yeah, it it ended in fourteen years ago. Well, not like our friendship or anything, but no, no, know, no. I... The Philo <laughs> show ended. <laughs> well, I don't remember why it ended. I know I had to. I moved back to California. Like I just couldn't be part of it, but I didn't realize that it ended like shortly after I left. I think what well, Hamill he was getting more response from Freaky Deaky. And yeah. the dancers, and especially the nude segment, he had he was getting the action on Freaky Deaky that he wanted to see here, but yeah. he wasn't really getting the viewership and action that and the thing that he envisioned Philo to be. It wasn't mm. it wasn't happening. We we didn't have many viewers, and we tended to have a lot of repeat viewers who would have. Repeat we had a viewers. dedicated following. 
We do of, have a good, at least all the group homes people. in the area were calling in. <laughs> uh, at least 30 people, you know, and yeah, the group homes were calling in that that's true. But, uh, you know, it, it was kind of cool. I got recognized on the street a couple times. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. I enjoyed, I enjoyed that. And also being able to take the artwork each week and then I'd scan it and then mm -hmm. put her up on like the, and you can still catch it on Facebook, the ancient Philo files yeah because you you repost them when i see them yeah i um once in a while i see ones only i only repost mine i don't want to go reposting anybody else's i don't have permission really uh well but you I do have, have permission to repost files. mine if, if you happen to run across one okay so. all right yeah that given when it shows up in my memories now i will post them so what have you been up to i haven't talked to you in years Hmm. Let's see. Right now, uh, dealing with a lot of dad stuff. Yeah. And that, that's, I am it. Um, I don't have any partners, no kids. Um, mom died a long time ago, so I'm the one that's taking care of dad. Mm. He's, in a, he's in a nursing home about two blocks away, uh, fortunately. His uh, cognition um, started failing last May. It failed real fast. Um, the Alzheimer's dementia went rapidly. Wow. I mean, in some ways that's almost better than, than losing the person slowly over time, you know? Yes. It, it, but it, it's still really rough to see. I'm sorry that you, it you was, have to go through yeah, that. Yeah. Trying to get a handle on all aspects of his life because he wasn't taken care of. Now, nothing went unpaid. Yeah. He did a really good job of wrapping things up with auto pay and making sure things kind of ran on their own practically. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, estate management. Yeah. And also yeah. dad management. And dad was getting pretty weird and wild and he wanted to go back to Albertville where he grew up like 70 years ago. He's, hmm. he's scraping 90 years old. So it, it became a bad Warner Brothers cartoon. Yeah, uh, between Thanksgiving and the first week of December, as he who lost his driving privileges because he kept getting lost, he wanted to get back home to Albertville, the farm he grew up on, which is long gone. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was uh, I caught him trying to rent a car a few blocks away and he did actually make it to the rental agency again. He did mm -hmm. rent a car, but he couldn't really tell them when he'd be returning the car. Uh, so that uh, she realized that was something kind of was a weird. red flag. Yeah. So yeah. she found my name in his wallet and called me and said, "Don't not rent him that car." No. And then he was going to uh, walk. Um, he was going to walk to the dealers and buy a new car. Now he has a nice car in the garage. It's I have the fobs. He ain't driving. He gets lost. Well, yeah. You did, don't, does he not have his license? How he can't he does drive. have a license. It is in the the doctor cleared him for local. He could drive locally during the day. Oh. But again, uh, last time my friend and I had to pick him up in Maple Plain, which is about 40 minutes out of the Twin City area. Wow. Um, just That's scary. scary. I said, what the hell are you doing out here? Uh, state, he flagged down a state trooper. You know, I got a call. Hi, Dale. <laughs> We we have uh we have Dale saying hi to us. Hi Dale. Hey Dale. So hi, Dale. uh uh where we are in the story is the humans are bitter that all of their buildings got destroyed. So they're turning on the team. And um and so we're we're uh -oh. doing the team. Yeah, Dale was at a uh, a toy convention today. Cool. Oh, jealous. What'd you get, Dale? Let's see, I need to find the chat button. Uh, there's, there's, it, it should look like a little balloon. Let's see. Uh, I wonder if I, if I press that. Yeah, I know. I see it. I just had to like. Oh, oh. I also have a, uh, I also an ad. have, yeah, I have an ad. Uh, All right, Dale, tell me about your toys. I want to know what toys you got. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. I gotta. Oh, I'm dead. Miscellaneous. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. 
Okay, because you keep saying I have to reload. I'm really sorry to hear about your dad, Kay. I mean, I know it must be really difficult because your relationships have totally switched. Yeah, like, I work in a, a retirement home right now, and okay, I just, you get it. A lot of them are very deep in dementia, and you just sometimes you're just like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but you just smile and you're like, mm -hmm. That's great. You just have to be a good ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Friends of mine who are into improv say, well, do improv with them. When they say they, there are monkeys outside the window, it's, yes, yeah. it's a good season for monkeys. <laughs> yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. One lady woke up and she said she saw her room was completely covered in turtles. She was like, go. she didn't want to get out of bed because there were turtles everywhere. And I was like, that might be a really cool thing to think about. Yeah, <laughs> nothing a couple but turtles. Weeks ago, yeah, Dad says, you know, he was lying back. He's he doesn't really move much. He sleeps a lot. He doesn't speak much anymore. He said, you know, this room is really full of fish. Ah, uh. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's I mean, pretty much the sense that he's making these days. So run with it. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy it while you can. Um, Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna have like a big, big Pluto. Oh, that's a nice Pluto. That is a very nice Pluto. He uh, he lost his yeah, hat. Yeah, he draws great Pluto. Uh, he well lost his hat, so we're gonna just have him without hat. And then um, I'm gonna cheat here, and I'm just gonna have him kind of fill in the space with black, so I don't have to draw it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I, I'm sure you, you guys understand. What's your favorite thing to draw, Kay? Hmm. I did enjoy drawing the Philos. And everybody had a slightly different take on the little green guy. Yeah, like, what do you fun. think he is? Because I think he's like an alien, but Amber says he isn't. Oh, he is an alien. Yeah. Is he? Yep, because at times he would go to his home planet. He'd visit his home planet. I, I just thought he was a creature of television. Hmm. <laughs> you know? Because he was named after Philo Farnsworth? No. Nope. Uh, he's those, an alien. Uh, know those well-made European antenna. plastic animal figures the size of half a fist. I bought a lot of them as cartooning references. I did see mm -hmm. an old toy from my youth, a Noah's Ark, but I walked by. I looked for Amber's toy, but they didn't have it. I asked for a Bronx from uh, Gargoyles with the folded wings for Goliath. Because I have the Goliath, but Annabelle broke his wings. Thing. So I want new wings, hmm. uh, but that's okay. Uh, and then uh, Dale said before that a mag with a lot of Sergio Aragonis in it and two issues of an old magazine about Mad Magazine. Okay. Yeah, I can't get the I can't get the dialogue right. I've got, I'm pushing the button, but it, it's glitchy. Uh, too many really pe uh, too many pop figures, too many people. But I was yeah. Uh, and nine five. That's why I stopped going to toy cons because it's all it's all pop figures. It's ridiculous. I, I actually ha I I have a handful of pop figures, but just ones that me like too. mean something to me. You know, I got I got some Daredevils. I have a Ben Franklin because he's like my favorite founding father. He's never president, you know. Mm -hmm. Like he's nope. too smart for that. Mm -hmm. I have like Jim Hansen, and I have Bill nice. Nye. Um, and I have a Jack Kirby neon painted Thor, and I have Adora Delano from Drag Race. I try, like, I try to get things that I can't find anywhere else. I have a B. Arthur from Golden Girls, Ooh, and I have a good. Sarah. I have a Sarah from Labyrinth because they've never really done an action figure of her either. Um, so yeah, that's most of my, oh, I have all the Ghostbuster girls as like pop, like pop Good. figures because they, after the movie came out, like no one liked it. And then the pop figures were like, no one bought it. So I got it for, I think like 10 bucks. It's like five of them. I'm like, you know, here's, I like what, the movie. The here's the funny thing. In collection circles, those are going to be the ones worth something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, so Dale also says too many pop figures. I swear 95% of the people there were dressed in black. Not many DVDs this time. Hmm. Can you that, read the beginning again? Because I didn't realize you were reading what he was saying. And I wanted uh, to hear what toys oh, he oh, had. He gotten. said a, 
uh, uh, what he had gotten. Uh, I did see an old toy from my youth, a Noah's Ark, but I walked by, I looked for Amber's toy, but they didn't have it. Know those well-made European plastic animal figures, the size of half a fist. I bought mm -hmm. a lot of them as cartooning reference. They oh. were pretty good. I yeah, remember yeah I have too. one that's a giant glow-in-the-dark dragon. I think I know what he's talking about because it's yeah. Uh, here, we let have me go a bunch get of it. dinosaurs for Annabelle of those. Nice. Mm. Yeah, they're they're uh, good toys. I I, I kind of okay. I kind of want to draw everybody, but I kind of don't want to draw everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this guy, mm -hmm. and we're going to paste him. <laughs> distort him <laughs> we're gonna paste yeah. and, and distort him i guess and mm -hmm. and yeah what have i been doing i've been working with comedian paul dillery for like the past i think it's like six years now yeah uh, oh yeah that is so cool um, it glows in the dark well yeah very nicely sculpted Ooh, very nice here we'll make we'll make this guy paul shorter Paul was doing stand-up comedy since the 80s, and he wanted to kind of go into comics, but he didn't really know how to do that, so I agreed to work with him on this trip. He comes up with the ideas, he sends me the panels, emails mm -hmm. them to me on, like, Wednesday, and then I set them up, and then I publish them in Facebook on Friday, oh, cool. Friday afternoons. Nice. It is. Is it, like, a series, or does he do, like, gags? Uh, it's basically the quiet, the, the non-speaking kid. He's a non-speaking kid who's weird. It's kind of mm -hmm. like Leo, the, the comic strip Leo, just a little bit. In fact, he could have gotten in syndicated, but his strip was just a little bit too much like Leo, L-I-O. Mm -hmm. um, uh, more from Dale. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, there are always sad loner Star Trek 90s action figures there. I went to Rasputin's, used records and DVDs afterwards. I, I scored the two Flintstones DVDs I was looking for and Ooh. three copies of Zardoz. Leo is a fun strip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leo is a fun strip. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Dale is obsessed with, uh, the movie Zardoz. Uh, yes. Apparently. Uh, he, he even commissioned a, um, oh, a nice Thor. Um, mm -hmm. He even commissioned. It's actually a, uh, it's specifically uh, painted like a Jack Kirby Thor. See, nice. Like that's the whole point of it. It's like a neon Jack Kirby thing. Yeah, with like the original colors. I think my only figure is an Alice Cooper with snake. Yeah. Oh, Alice Cooper is cool. Done? I yeah, I have well. the Janis Joplin from that series. It, I think it's if it's the Todd McFarlane series that you have because I know he did an Alice Cooper. It's so beautiful. I've got the Janis Joplin version. Of, like, I have the Janis Joplin of that same series. I need to get Iggy he, Pop. Yeah. That would be cool. I you don't know, know if he did Iggy. Since uh, Dale mentioned Star Trek, did you know that Iggy Pop was a guest star on Star Trek? You know what? Yeah, I heard about that. He He's in an episode of DS9. He plays a Forta. He's in makeup! <laughs> he's in Deep Space Nine? He's That's in crazy. He's nine. Yeah, he's in he's in um one episode where he plays a Vorta and and he gets knocked out for like half the episode. And right. it's probably because he wasn't very good at like remembering lines or whatever. He's not an actor. But you know, no. it's still cool because it's like, is that Iggy Pop? And it's Iggy Pop. Very cool. <laughs> Sardos will change your life. I want to write an article about it and send it to 14 times. Hmm. Yeah. With with Paul. Uh, I'm mainly editing his strip. Uh, I have to reblock a lot, reframe his frames, check his proportions, because, you know, even after six years, you know, the kid looks different from frame to frame, and you can't have that in a comic strip. you got to have some consistency. So mm -hmm. I got really good at uh, Photoshop making that happen. Also, hands. He doesn't really draw hands very well. He started out, and he's just, I think he's tracing hands now. And then I take, I I still redraw all the hands and feet. Well, they have big toes. They have fingers, thumbs on the right, on the proper Good side. Grief. <laughs> Do you ever yeah. suggest that you take an anatomy class? Uh, I well, first of all, I said, you know, should I get you one of those triangles because your the lines? He was hand drawing the frames, and they were the lines were always wonky. So the first thing I do is I I 
make new frames for him. I still mm -hmm. do. It's it's about two hours a week still, and sometimes more if he gets ambitious and does like a six panel. But I do like working with him. Well, here mm -hmm. here's the cool part: is it at least it's art related, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is. Let's see. And it got me knowing. It got me pretty darn proficient in Photoshop. Right. Nothing else would have, because you're doing a little bit of everything. I'm I'm probably oh, spending yeah. too That's much nice time. Crowd. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. spending like too much time in this, you know, for like what I'm I'm actually doing. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. Don't forget I'm, to pixelate Otis. Oh, I will pixelate Otis. Yeah, I'm not there yet. I haven't done my my effects layer yet. It looks really good though. Let's see, we'll do this, and then she's in front. You should yeah. give, you have two of the same guy in the front. You should give oh, like I, one of them a mustache or a beard. Oh, I will. You got I will. four of the same guy. All right. Yeah, I know. But it looks good. I copied him. Uh, yeah. That's because I copied him. Easy. Easy shorthand. Yeah, I am all about making it easier on myself. So I yeah, don't blame you. Yeah, we're doing that. And then, um, okay. got to clean that up. Okay. So you said give some of the guys mustaches. This guy's going to have a beard. Or, and a beard and or beard. Glasses. Uh, this guy Perfect. is... Uh, he's going to have a bigger nose. And just a beard. And uh, a logo on his t-shirt. Okay, there. Now they don't look quite so obvious. Perfect. And that's, that's, a, that's good enough for Philo. Right there. Panel one, done. Panel one, done. All right, we'll clean up Otis mm -hmm. so that Otis has his little static. Mm -hmm. And we know which one's Otis. Well, we should ask Dale what should ha what's gonna happen next, Dale. Dale, what happens next? There's a mob and why is it? The why computer. is one of your kid holy grails Noah's Ark? That's a very interesting oh. kid holy grail. Uh, if they have a computer or iPad, look at the app Handy for hand reference. Very nice. Oh, developer. Mm -hmm. Very I nice. Got handy. Uh, hello, I just found the best anime. What's the best anime, developer? The best anime. Let's see. Um, you know what All I'm right. also going to do? No, no, I'm no. This this is a good enough crowd. Okay. I'm 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 going to close it. I'm making a new panel. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah. Okay, panel two. Uh, reborn. I'm trying to think of what's going to happen next. Hmm. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's so stupid and great. Ah, oh, interesting. Reborn is a vending machine. Okay. So let me copy this and put that here, and I shall close this and what happens next did someone say that someone is reborn as a vending machine that's the anime that a uh, developer just discovered that he was talking about oh, he says he just I found the thinking, best anime i was thinking it'd be really funny if one of our characters got reborn as a vending machine well he could do that <laughs> i was like that's a very so, interesting like, plot idea <laughs> Mm -hmm. see, the hero should it's point super absurd and i love it frame and shout oh my god what is that okay <laughs> sure i'll do that that works okay Does, is he vending condoms or ipods at the airport or <laughs> that's the old technology now i guess uh, oh my god god would be capitalized right yeah if you want to be polite it's a vending machine for Coke product. Um, oh my god! I always think that? that at the airport they could have like really odd vending machines. So like, if you're like last minute things that you've forgotten, like toothpaste or mittens, mm -hmm. they could be that kind of vending machine. A Swiss Army vending machine. They can be a bunch of different Ooh. things. Ooh. Yeah. But who would it be? Would it be um, Otis? Uh, we didn't know that Otis could shapeshift, and he shapeshifts into a vending machine to distract so, the 
crowd and then the crowd gets so excited to see this cool vending machine with all this weird neat stuff and they're easily distracted and everyone gets to, to escape uh, mm -hmm. So uh, Dale had the suggestion that the heroes should point to something out of frame and shout, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> Look Works over there. The yeah. yeah. So, so that's going to be their distraction. And, oh, and I... yeah, there might be vending machines involved. I don't know. But yeah, we're, we're going to have, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. When I was away, there was yeah. a there was a Canadian beer company that did this series of commercials about where they put like the beer fridges in very random places around Europe. Yeah. And they did they did two versions of this commercial. Like, in the first one, um, you just had to show your Canadian passport and like put it in the vending machine, and then the vending machine would open and you could get free beer. Mm-hmm. But in the second commercial, what they did is they got people to say, like, I am whatever they are in whatever language they are in. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, you know, I am Canadian, I am German, I am, but it, like it had to be in their language. So it was like this international meeting of people and then the beer would, the beer fridge would open. But beer it was kind of neat. It was a really cute series. Uh, during the Trump era. Let's see. Exactly. A vending machine? Is that what happens poke. when you reach Love up it. in a vending machine to steal something and vending machine bites you? So he thinks that there should be a wear vending machine. I think that's like a, a werewolf, idea. but a vending machine. Yes. So so mm -hmm. maybe there is something that they're pointing at. Maybe they're not running away. <laughs> With the full moon. What? That's insane oh, to me, and I kind of love it. Into a vending machine. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really excellent. Okay, that's a really excellent idea. I really yeah. think we need to go with it. Oh my god, it. what is that? And then was... you know, and then they're running away, and then under the full moon, one of them turns into a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Ah, uh, Philo yes. is certainly in his swing. Um, Kay, I, I think we're on course for what we used to do. Okay. <laughs> Peep dispenser? Uh, it could be a peep dispenser. Um, That's cool. I like peep. A peep and pez dispenser. <laughs> hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me... Let peep, me get... pez, and pizza. Okay. If things that start with P. Sure. Uh, Pete, pens, pizza. Uh, I don't know. They in Las Vegas they have pot vending machines. They have them here oh, in shit. um Colorado too, but you have to go into a dispensary to get them. Out in um Las Vegas, they're just on the street. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're it's been legal up here for now. years, and I've never seen a pot vending machine. Yeah. Nope. You know no what they used to have though here. in Montreal that's really cool is they have this thing called Distro Robo and it, a guy took these like, you know, those really old cigarette machines that you could buy, like, you know, you turn the dial and you get a cigarette pack kind of thing. Yeah. He yeah. turned those machines into like zine um, distributors and like, yeah. so you, like any local person could create a little thing, whether a piece of art or an audio recording or yeah. something like a little piece of art and then you pay money in the distro robo you pick which one you want and you turn it instead of getting cigarettes you got this in, little thing in minneapolis, it's, it's a very cool thing in minneapolis there's a place called open book which is all about preserving a uh, uh, printing process right they have one of those mm -hmm. and and i have to admit oh I, you know, cool I, I, yeah, I have to admit, I, I put in, you know, the five dollars and quarters, you know, to see what I could get. And it, it was like it was a you opened it up and it was a tiny stage with actors on it, you know, because nice. it was like, yeah, it's, it it's was, not just like it's folk art. It's literally yeah, it, folk exactly, art. And you know, it's so it, cool. As long as it fits into the shape of a cigarette mm -hmm. box you can yep. put it in there and so this person just had this box and you opened it up and it was this tiny little paper stage with little actors that's on cool there you scored yeah you yeah scored. And, and i i don't i have no idea where it was but but it i paid five bucks for it and it was worth every cent there's also one at uh, boynton health center on the u of m campus still yeah. it's been there for been at least five years and it's a great source of tiny little art gifts 
Mm. They're little pieces of art. It might be a weird piece of jewelry, but it all fits into the size of a matchbox. Whatever oh, you nice. buy. So yeah. that's kind of neat source for presents, cool presents. So uh, Dale says, uh, do you guys peep joust? And then he says, in college, my pals repurposed an old Coca-Cola vending machine into a beer machine. They mm. had to end it because we all learned to scam the machine like Fonzie. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, Whoever stopped trying to get free booze, no one. No mm -hmm. one. When the opportunity arises, nobody says no. That well, depends on... Uh... I, I don't know. Like, there's people that just choose not to drink, you know, whether they have a, a reason for it, like the alcohol doesn't get along with them or their lifestyle, or they just don't like it. That's you know? true. That's me. I don't really like drinking. I'm not smoke against my it. Vice. Yeah, exactly. My that's vice, that's so. what I say. Yeah, I prefer to smoke smoke. I <clears throat> see. Uh, Versus uh, okay. drinking, drinking. How about uh, you, Kay? Says, What's your vice? Uh, let's see. Uh, the the new now that it's legalized in Minnesota, the THC sodas. Oh, really yeah. nice. There's no sugar. I had to cut down on my sugar because I was a little bit too close to diabetic, and and keeping sugar out of your diet keeps you all in balance. Well, guess what? You know, if you stop drinking, it's a hell of a lot easier to keep in balance, especially with these little sodas uh, mm. with no sugar excellent taste and a little bit of a kick to it um, right, right. it was it was gratifying because it's like i can't do that anymore what what, what i can't do anything really uh, uh yeah dale says oh i have seen machines like that cigarette machines repurposed to sell small gifts and he says i don't drink anymore even if it is free see dale's yeah. one of those people that just doesn't drink it's uh, yeah the alcohol and also no hangovers either so yeah that's I mean, not my, fun. my dad, uh, you know, he's one of those people that couldn't drink because it didn't get along with his lifestyle. Like, you know, he had DUIs and up in jail, you know, it was, it was not good. And so he was 37 years sober when he passed away. And, um, you know, he, uh, one thing I learned from him is when you have a party, you always have sodas, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's like, it, it's as silly as it is. You don't oh, yeah. know if somebody does that. And then after the party, you have soda. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's it it it's a win-win for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Thanks prefer God. juice. Mm. Let's see. Uh I don't need to drink to have hangovers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it certainly <laughs> helps. I let's see. You were asking what I was doing. Comic strip. I did illustrate a book by Philip Lowe called Get Me Be Get Behind Me. Santa. Yeah. Um, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, oh. That was, was kind of a little Philo-esque in that I got to draw weird characters in strange situations. And of course, Phil loved whatever I put out. Nice. And, um, nice. and he was, he, I think he just had his first kids, so he was pretty much stuck at home you know, doing dad care. And yeah. I would email him a drawing like every two or three days. And he just laugh, laugh mm -hmm. his ass off, which is good. Good. And the book's mm -hmm. still out there. You can buy it. It's pretty funny, too. Uh, I wanted to, I had seen it as a play, the play version, and I dug it. So when he proposed, it's like, would you like to illustrate a book version of this? Like, hell yeah. You know, it's like, one, two, three. Yes, yes, yes. I want this. Yeah, and then it's I like, let me him... let me give it some deep and serious thought. Yes, I'll do. And it. he actually paid me for it too, which was nice. paid me handsomely for it. Uh, and then Good I morning. did a bunch of speculative drawings for another children's book for a friend in the performance community, and I did a hell of a good job on it. Um, it was the children's book about uh, the the Baron of Bubble. He, he does magical bubbles. And that oh, okay. was fun. And I was doing it like one does children's books now with diverse characters. Mm -hmm. And I had one of everybody in there. And I drew them very well. Even, yeah, it's just very well drawn. But his book ended up getting taken up by a publisher uh, who insisted 
you know, I will publish your book, but you have to go with my artists, hmm. which happens a lot. Yeah. You've seen That's that, Amber, cool. haven't you? Yeah, yeah, it's it's happened to me where it's like, you know, uh, I've I've been working on a project and it it, it just happened to Ian in, in kind of a, a different way. Ian's my partner. Um, uh, he was working at a company that got bought out by a larger company and the the corporate uh, culture shifted overnight, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it was like, yeah, it's just, you know, you have to adapt. You have to adapt. That's so, that's just. I have a great portfolio now. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, I won't be able to get back to this until I retire in a few years. Yeah. Not too many years, like about three. Um, and then I'll get back to book illustration. Um, that was that COVID started, and then there was a while where I just didn't want to draw anything because COVID. I didn't yeah. get it. It's just kind of. I suppose I got depressed because COVID, man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty damn heavy. Yeah, um, a lot of us were. <laughs> I did see the book. It did eventually come out with the publisher and the artist that he went with. And it's like, okay. Yeah. He made all the character, the artist, it looks like the publisher hired his teenage daughter mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and made everybody into dogs. Okay. okay. Dogs in Renaissance costumes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, as far as diversity, that's cheating, but <laughs> whatever. I've been uh, working on a uh, a kids book, and it originally started out with a ladybug, and now it's about a salamander. So I get it. Okay. Yeah. It's relatively the same story, but uh, yeah, it, it's it. I had to throw out a bunch of art. Hmm. Yeah, about that's that. not a good feeling. That's a lot. Okay. Uh, a good portfolio. Hey. Uh, Dale, Dale's been talking to us. Uh, he says, uh, I don't need to drink to have hangovers. He says, yay, paid. And uh, I'm still dealing with the damn pandemic. And he says, different breeds of dogs, question mark? Uh, kind of. Yeah. You know, a blue, uh, a brown dog, an orange dog yellow dog and they're all in renaissance fair outfits because this performer so came weird from yes because uh, that, that's how things work yeah <laughs> i can't say i've seen it anywhere um he i'm sure he was selling it out at renfest and probably sold a few copies but i don't think it's going to but then when if I drew it, it probably wouldn't have ended up in big time publishing either. But I am proud of the work that I did for it. It still ends up in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. What happens next? We so so, so we, we had we had made the decision that they go uh they go, what the hell is that? And then they're running away. Yeah, and so in my mind, you see through, you the panel that you did where they were in the center and the crowd was all around them. Yeah. But then the crowd's all looking away to the right and they're slinking, like slinking off to the left to run. The group That's what I see. Slinks. I gotta get something to eat. I'm a bit scared of drawing folks. diverse characters in case I draw something offensively stereotypical. Yeah. That's um, fair. Yeah. That's fair. No one's demanding that you do it. It's, it's whatever, it's your art, whatever makes you feel comfortable. So, um, I do, I, uh, just for the second, because I'm not going to be drawing for a second, I am going to put Kat up here. Cause Cat I got belly. The, Yeah, I have, belly. I have Cat Belly. Let's see if I can show Cat Face. <laughs> Cat there we face. go. There's Cat Face. She's like, oh, no, oh, no. action on the cat cam. Action on the cat cam. <laughs> she covered her face. <laughs> She did not let you. <laughs> yeah, what did they eat too? I thought I brought my bag, but I left my bag in the kitchen. <coughs> I've been fighting this thing. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got a toddler. She's just going to infect you every two weeks. Every two weeks. Every two weeks I get infected. Yep. There we go. 
Okay, so the group syncs off. So let me go back to the sketch layer. And uh, we're going to have everybody looking this way. Like this, you know what I've been reading this week hmm. is I've been reading um the Tracy Lord's autobiography. Oh, yeah, is it good? It's really interesting and really depressing because like when she when they discovered she was underage, they like mm -hmm. burst down her door at three a.m. with thousands of FBI agents arrested her she was just in a long t-shirt she was naked underneath she was in bed with her boyfriend yeah. they dragged her to the station they made yeah. her watch her films with like 12 other cops like Get none of it was treating her like a child porn victim yeah uh, which is what she was she, they all acted like she was the queen of porn you know she, like she she was she i'm not saying she wasn't exploited but he was. she altered her birth certificate so it looked like she was over 18 for her first yeah, three she, movies. Yeah, she I know. But that. he did that a long... Like, it didn't... It's not how... I don't know. Maybe I'm buying the, the, the hook, line, and sinker. But she wanted to make money and leave her house where she was being abused. Yes. And the only she went to get a job and the yes. quickest way to get a job was to pretend she was 18 instead of 15. So and then she got into modeling which and then became nude photography and it, there were men in her life that were steering her in these directions where and she she's 15 years of age. Like Yeah. Just because she looks like a woman when you put a ton of makeup on her, it doesn't change the I, fact that she's still a I, child. I'm not saying she wasn't exploited. I I fully believe that she was exploited, she was manipulated and she was groomed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But she she changed the date on her birth certificate for mm -hmm. her Yeah, first but she didn't film. do it to get into porn. She did it to get a job. And so you know, it, it's not like she's sitting there going, oh, well, I'm doing this so that I can have sex with men and get paid reading, for it. You're also reading a story. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe I'm falling for it. Far mm -hmm. long, you know, a long time ago. And, and the story's changed a lot and stuff like that. But uh, you can you can view Tracy Lord's file uh, on, you know, the FBI. You can go at basically uh, get a Freedom of Information Act and view the file because it's a public file and and she altered her birth certificate for her first no one's film. disputing that but you're making it because, sound like she no, did it on she purpose did. to get she into did. sex films now, and mind she did she did 200 films before she was over the age of 18. okay so 200 films under the age of 18 when she was obviously a child uh you know it was child porn pornography that's why you can't find her films anymore is because you know it's considered exploitive of a child and and there's nothing right about that she's not completely innocent she's not she's not guilty i'm not saying that either but, but i'm just saying innocent. she's a victim and i think we should be a little more sympathetic than we have been let's see you uh, know people got all really high and mighty about monica lewinsky too but yeah. you know they harassed the hell out of her, and if the, that if that whole situation happened today, it would be a totally different so, story. Uh, uh, Dale's been talking to us. Uh, he says, "I'm a bit scared of drawing diverse characters in case I draw something offensively stereotypical. No mm -hmm. run with speed lines and dust clouds. I should draw different ages and races and body types to be more well-rounded as an artist. I did draw Tony Randall dresses as Dr. Lau. I don't know if that is." automatically racist she was a high profile no. character she was a symbol in reagan usa she fell into the system in la that sends models to become paper dolls new models sent into porn that's from dale so dale's on your side hmm. yeah uh let's see the group slinks off so i'm gonna have him like that i mean i, I the tracy lloyd lords was totally a victim and i think i lost robin she froze on me Mm -hmm. Oh no, I hope she's not angry at me. 
I hope she didn't leave. Oh, she just No, froze. I'm not angry. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I just thought 200 was a pretty big number. It's actually 100. Oh, 100. I thought it was 200. Yeah, but I, I looked it up. It was... 200 just seemed too, too huge. And it was just 100. Yeah, and um, the... I'm not mad though. I'm not mad. Yeah, I was just yeah. looking. Let's see. We're we're trying to draw Bluto over here, like trying to slink away. But yes, diverse characters very important. Let's see. Do that. Vital. I mean, you don't even know how important it is to be um, seen until you're seen, and it's so weird to say that. But like, I didn't realize it till I watched that cartoon Red. I'm not like Asian or anything, but like because it was filmed in Canada, and, like so much of like there was a, there was a moment where it showed her little Canadian house, and I started crying because I was like, mm. "That's so Canadian! It's so Toronto! It's so like that's my world!" Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, it's just a small way, but like if you're Asian or you're trans, honestly, to see what you imagine yourself to be or what you think you are on screen and representing a world you could have it's so important mm -hmm. well here's here's another reason why diversity matters okay and and especially in representation when i grew up i liked watching the x-men cartoon my one of my favorite characters is storm because she has weather powers and she was cool and she you know she always carried herself well and she had mm -hmm. grace you know, and, and, and just things that the other characters didn't have, right? I am not a little black girl looking up to a black figure. I am a little white girl looking up to a black figure. And that's important, too. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's just because it, the little black girls have always looked up to the, the white figures. And now they're finally starting to have figures that represent them, which is awesome. They have mermaids now. It's also and like... Mm -hmm. It's educational too, right? Because like the last mm -hmm. TV show, superhero TV show that I really, really loved was that Miss Marvel. Yeah. And it's all about like Indian Muslim culture. And you learn, I learned so much about that culture just watching that TV series. And it was so, so good. It was so interesting. But then you learn, you know, mm -hmm. you're exposed to things that you wouldn't normally see. Well, I mean, even Tintin comics are racist like you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's neither well, here nor there <laughs> oh wow yeah uh, um, but then he was drawing from like the late 20s through the late 40s well it's definitely and he went to religious not. school and the priest that influenced him the most was actually part of the nazi party so even if he didn't really want to say anything about it he was easily influenced by the adults around him as he was growing up yeah mm-hmm I've actually, I've been to the Hergé Museum. It's quite fascinating, all the stuff they have in there. For example, even though he drew Snowy a lot, he didn't like dogs, he preferred cats. And there's like a whole huge um, series of books that he's done in the museum, all about cats. Uh, uh, Dale says, uh, I won't judge Tracy Wards. It is too bad she didn't break into mainstream comedies. I hope she got out of the biz before HIV. He also says, what worries me is that with big nose style cartooning, there is some exaggeration. And the question is, where do you draw the line? You look at early Hank Ketchum, Dennis the Menace, and some of the depictions of black kids were really offensive. Yeah, but do you I, have to draw the line? It's just a different style. I mean, look at Don Bluth. He spawned a whole series of style. Well, I like, mean... I, yeah, do you have but, to draw the line just because they're big nose characters? Like, it's kind of latching on to something that you don't need to latch on to. Let's, let's get a, a good... When Lilo and Stitch came out, no one was complaining. But now that we've got Steven Universe and... Adventure Time and all these cartoons influenced by each other because they've all worked on each other's cartoons. It's not a yeah. bad thing. It's going to evolve again and there's going to be something else that's more trendy eventually. It is what it is. Teenagers yeah. are going to find a different cartoon style that they're going to like more than the big noses. Give it time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, I, you know, because I, I'm always... I love comics. I love reading comics, but I really don't have that large of a collection. You know, it's oh, like my too much my comic, money. Too well, much my money. Comic, 
a, a reading is very selective, right? And so I find myself more influenced by art, like, like paintings and illustration and stuff than I am by comics. And so my stuff is just different than a lot of other people's because it, it hasn't had those same influences. Let's see, uh, Dale says, uh, if you are a cartoonist, you must draw a line. The kids are wrong. He, he did it in caps, so I had to yell it. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> the kids yeah. are the future. We have no choice. That's why we're hearing about Taylor Swift all the time. Because that's what the kids care about. I like Taylor Swift. Well, I'm not I, dissing her. I have several of her songs on my, my workout playlist. She writes good music. There's no doubt. Well, I'm well, also, she's pissing off a bunch of people that I really appreciate that she's pissing off. Football mm -hmm. fans? Uh, sure, that too. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, like, down here, I, I don't know if, like, the Super Bowl is important in Canada because, like, no. football's kind of an American game. Well, um, actually, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. Um... Because I work at a butcher shop, and Super Bowl weekend, we did a fair amount of uh, money on wings and sausages. So there were a lot of Super Bowl parties, so... I think it's yeah. because the Buffalo Bills had a chance this year, so people got yeah. more involved than usual. Because well, we're right point, by the border, so there's a lot of fans. The point that I was getting to was that uh, Taylor Swift was dating the... Um, uh uh kansas city chiefs what uh, one of one of their players and what? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah travis this has been on the news down here in the states like crazy, no right? my my question is the term was isn't it more she still is no she's still dating him um yeah I, okay I'm just, I just, you made it sound like they broke up <laughs> no 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 but she's with travis kelch right and yeah. and so there was like right-wing conspiracy that like they were forcing the game to be won by the Kansas City Chiefs so that she would endorse Obama like during halftime and shit. And like Obama's not even running for president. Running. Or yeah, mm -hmm. it's it was it was weird. Yeah, it, it gets weird, you know. And, and so she's Drafting pissing off all these people. She's pissing off all these people, and they're like coming up with conspiracy theories about it. And I just kind of love it. You know? Hey, it's, hey, it's like, who's one of your favorite musicians? Hmm. I like Eno. Brian Eno. Brian Eno? Nice. Back, yeah, that goes back quite a ways. Right now, um, I've been finding sometimes people put up something on like KFAI and it's like, oh my God, that's fantastic. Um, radio station, but like, what do they usually play? KFAI is a, yeah, it's a community radio station. Nice. So they pretty much play what they want. Um, what do I have the most of? I uh, Dale of says, my problem is I really dug Mad and Cartoons and Men's Mags and Nat National Lampoon and Underground Comics with an X. Uh, so there was always a touch of racist humor in those cartoons and I admire the designs, not the racism. A lot of preachers are saying Taylor is conducting satanic cer uh, ceremonies on stage. Okay. <laughs> Poor Taylor. She's such a good old girl, too. She's like... She doesn't do anything. No, she didn't do anything. She writes mm -hmm. um, She writes breakup songs. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. like, like every like other singer in the world. Part. Yeah, you know? She writes breakup when, songs. When the Dixie Chicks got raked over. Oh. Yeah. That was... Just, that for, was just for just saying, like, nothing horrible. Just for saying we don't agree with the current administration. He's not mm -hmm. our president, you know? Yeah. Like, and he's sick. Of destroy them! Mm. Those poor he's girls, sick. too. I always wonder that, you know, because on the radios, they always play Like a Prayer now. And I'm just like, I, I have not forgotten when everyone lost their shit over that video because she had a black guy playing Jesus and everything she did was censored, including this song. And but now mm -hmm. it's just on the radio. It's no big deal. It's like it is what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was listening to Black Eyed Peas a couple weeks ago. It was like their early albums and their. Mm -hmm. I, it was on uh, YouTube, my YouTube premium thing, and they had mm -hmm. censored the word shit. 
they'd censored it on the song. And I'm like, but J-Lo has a song out right now where she's like, I love that shit. I love that shit over and over again. And it's like, yeah. it's on the radio everywhere. I, I've heard that. Yeah. It's a great song. I actually really like it, but. Well, okay. So YouTube is like gotten really uh, stingy about their standards lately. Well, mm -hmm. that was the first time I've heard anything censored, but what, what I listened to on there. Yeah. Um, I, I follow like some video game guys you know that like play video games and then review them or or they'll have like funny play styles and stuff and um uh some of them had uh uh videos demonetized because of something that they did like seven years ago that broke the uh standards that they oh, just wow. set this week you know that's what i not mean fair yeah and and so it's like they're like, that's not fair. I, I was trying to figure out why this video was demonetized. And then I get seven more of my videos demonetized, you know? And it's, you know, these are people trying not to make cool. their living off of YouTube. And they're, they're basically saying that, like, your standards of your videos need to adhere to future standards that don't even exist yet. Yeah, exactly. That we don't even know what they're going to be. Yeah, exactly. Not and fair. that... It, it's not fair, but that's what YouTube's been doing. Is By the way, I was, giggling, I was giggling earlier because I really I really like how you drew Pluto. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, slinking? Yeah, yeah. The, the crowd doesn't look very good back here, but that's okay, you know. Um, we're, this is Philo art. You know, no, I think we, the crowd looks all right. Can. We do what I we just can. think you need to add a girl with blonde hair. A girl with blonde you, hair? Well, in the other crowd scene, you had like two of them <coughs> with like kind of wavyish, blondish, longer hair, just so that it's it's got one bit of consistency. <laughs> sure. Okay. We'll we'll do that. We'll, Perfect. We'll Thank put, you. Yeah. We'll put the the like longer hair back here. Yeah. Okay. There. They're totally a crowd now. All right. Um. And then we're gonna. We're gonna make Otis distinguishable. You gotta odify him. You gotta yeah, odify I gotta him. Oda, I gotta odify him. I gotta make sure that he's he's uh, Otisfied. Yeah, I wonder right. if you would uh, be able to see my game with our dragon. So Dale says, "Oh my God, I don't get into a conversation about what color Jesus was with some people. I took art history courses in college. Jesus was obviously Italian or German. Where is Kay? I'm in San Jose. <laughs> I don't know. Tom Robbins says he's Jewish. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I, I, I like uh, yeah, right. uh, Robin Williams thing about Jesus is Jewish. You know, saying like at home living with his mother." She thinks he's he's God's gift to the world. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's dumb but good. <laughs> you know, and for the last supper, what they oh, got go out for Chinese? They got it. You've been yeah. dead for years and you're still funny. Hey, you want to oh, hear Robin. the dumb religious joke I heard the other day because I work at a uh, with nuns? <laughs> <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I actually thought it was quite clever. It wasn't dumb, but all right, so there's this priest and he dies and he goes up to heaven and he's at the pearly gates and he's in line and he starts talking to the guy in front of him and he finds out the guy in front of him is a taxi driver. So they get to St. Peter at the gates and I guess St. Peter gives like a bunch of stuff like a cornucopia of fruits and veg, all these things to the cab driver. The cab driver goes in. Then he, the priest comes up and they give him very little, like very meager things and he's, he's kind of mad and he's like, what's going on? Like, I'm a priest. I've given my entire life to you guys, to this religion. He's just a cab driver. And they go, well, we judge based on results. And everyone fell asleep during your sermons, but everyone prayed to God in his car. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. I thought that was cute. I'm not religious. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, okay. So oh, what happens go. next is... is how mm -hmm. is how are they Ooh, going to look, turn guys, into look. a mayor vending machine? You said Amber, that look. The, ooh, it's glow in the dark. Mm. Yes. So where are they going to turn into a wear vending machine? It's it's the moon comes out, right? Mm -hmm. So who's who's the wear vending machine? I think it should be Otis because he's like a shapeshifter. Be, well, because he came out of the fingers. Yeah. 
Okay. Or it's uh, the dog. Okay. I don't know. What do you think, Kay? What does Kay think? <laughs> Here, I'm trying to think of what he will be dispensing. Wisdom. Uh, Shaved ice? <laughs> so Yellow snow? Is actually a where where vending machine. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's do that. We'll see if that works. Is that how you spell where vending machine? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's how uh, I would spell it. Right. Like, with with w e r e it's not there's not like it's not w e a r e cuz that or, No no you're right it's w e r e yeah, werewolf yeah. Okay okay so yeah so where vending is right It's let's see someone moons them let's see the full moon comes out revealing oh this is actually a where vending machine Um okay uh, let me go back to my sketch layer Come on where vending machine um, You know what you should go back to the last page and put the moon in the left hand corner as like uh foreshadowing. Oh, that is the wrong one. Um let's see, that's this one right here. And you think I should do a little just because it kind of comes moon. out of nowhere, but if it's in the panel before we're kind of leading up to it, you know. Just idea. So I'll do. I'll do like cloud just peeking out. Mm -hmm. There. So it mm -hmm. looks like nice. looks like Perfect. it was meant to be that way. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So we'll do that. We'll go back to my sketchy layer, and and so we're gonna have the the moon comes out. Right, and we'll have our clouds, right? Shine, 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 moon, 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 moon. And then we're gonna have Otis grab his chest, uh, right? As he's like, uh, no, and he's gonna be, uh, he feels pain, pain uh, of hair going in places and yeah. robotic body awareness happening. Okay. And of course, the dispensing door. Well, yeah, I. I uh, Where that will be is up to you. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, I have an idea. <laughs> I don't remember this job being make it as difficult as possible for the artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it always is, right? Turn him so, into a vending machine. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> How are we gonna yeah, do that? <laughs> somehow, that's that's what we're gonna do, right? Ooh, yeah, yeah. So nice. I'm just gonna have like, like he's got a tiny little body back here with his like hands, and and I'm just gonna have his stuff in there, and his mouth and becomes the door. Very good. Yes, yes. So that that's. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, let's get his butt up in the air a little bit here, and then, yeah, okay. That, that, that I I give myself a sketch layer. Um, let's see. Oh, someone moves good. him. Oh, Dale says perhaps Bluto. Maybe in the past Ooh. Eugene bit Bluto. Remember that Eugene is a higher dimensional being. It could be a learning mm -hmm. experience to have help evolve Bluto. He should. Just poof in a cloud of smoke into a vending machine. Everything's with the cloud of smoke with you, Dale. <laughs> Everything's in a cloud of smoke. Make it in, in a cloud of smoke. I Who's Eugene? Uh, and I think he means Philo. Okay, that's what I thought. I was just yeah. making sure. I saw the movie One Love today. Um, was it good? Yes. Was that I the one about Bob Marley? Yes. Oh, cool. 
I watched a yeah, documentary about him a couple of months ago, and it was very interesting. Please tell us about the movie. Um, I it's it, Marley family members are all over it, and it was produced by Ziggy Marley, uh, who was adamant about you know getting the right perspective on things and perspective. Yes, it's it's a thoughtful movie. It makes you think about. I didn't really know much about Jamaica at that time. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of saw it as college kids just glommed on the Paul, you know, onto uh, Bob Marley, and kind of ignored Peter Tosh. You know, <laughs> well, you think they would have yeah. gotten more into Tosh. Well, um, uh, Bob Marley was really big in the Back to Africa movement. Mm-hmm. You know, he 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 believed that because black people's roots were cut off that returning home would make them like stronger i guess um mm-hmm. yeah well, it, also part of the rastafa you know to be close to Haile so uh, yeah okay. yeah because there yeah. is yeah he tells he tells his partner you know it's like we're gonna we're gonna buy some land in africa and you know and we're gonna move there and you know, once they've made it big and Rita is just kind of looking at him and Rita character and his wife it just she really should get Oscar nomination I thought she was she carried the actor portraying Bob Marley was fantastic and the other you know roles were were great he was one of the but, kens eh hmm? one of the kens and barbie the guy who played bob marley hmm <laughs> didn't catch i haven't seen the the barbie film yet oh okay nope you really should there was honestly there was a black, there was a black male barbie uh it was there was brad. two in the movie it was brad actually and he had a very um i had a brad doll back in the day I- no, nice. because he was on sale. He was on clearance. It was like three dollars, and that's like okay. I bought him. You know, Julia needs a husband. I had Julia as well, the black nurse Barbie, nice. and a Chrissy. I think I may have had at one point in time, but um, yeah, the Brad, um, kind of a milk toast looking Barbie character. Definitely not dreads. I don't think they really developed Brad all that much. I can't say that his looks changed or if he's still in the retinue of Barbie characters. But anyway, Bob Marley, uh, yeah. Uh, Rita, you just keep looking at that poor woman in that that woman's eyes. You know Mm -hmm. what? As I said to someone after the film, Rita saw everything. Mm -hmm. She saw everything. And also, she wasn't she wasn't going to be played for a fool or for a victim or for a woman not getting what she needed. She she did, you know, confront Bob at the height of his career. It's like, okay, you go running off to these young. Know, so where Dale, is the money? <laughs> so where Dale is- says, uh, "I'm not the one smoking." He says, no, I met Popeye's higher dimensional orchid eating dog, Eugene the Jeep. Eugene is the oh, Dr. Manhattan geez. of Thimble Theater. Right, I saw the orchids. Super 7 Commander uh, data figure today. It comes with Spot the Cat. Right. Mm. Yes. I, I didn't um, mean to cut you off, Kay. I just, you know, I want to acknowledge the, the people that are uh, spending time, you know, playing with We us. do appreciate you, Dale. And I don't know yeah. what's wrong with my app, but it's glitching and I can't read what um being in the when i push that button it doesn't do anything it did before but i think i have to reload so i don't know um yeah the documentary (laughs) i watched on marley like my favorite marley is his um when he's with the wailing whalers back when he was like a kid basically he -hmm. did like this version of motown ska and if you get like the early years of the Wailing Whalers, you can hear that those that music. It's really good. Like There's I love it. There's a little it. bit of it in there. There is one number uh, from yeah, in that. Uh, that's but great. um, the the documentary I saw was fascinating because <laughs> Dale says he's got to go check on Cinema Insomnia, Insomnia, but he'll be back in a couple of minutes. Cool, cool. Um, 
it was about it's on Netflix. It's called the Remastered, and it's okay. about how they tried to assassinate Bob Marley, and they actually shot Rita too. And so yes, he left Jamaica, and then they talk about how the two political parties in Jamaica were fighting all the time. Yes, and they were. at one point they put um, the warlords in jail. And when that happened, those two mm-hmm. guys started talking, and they were like, "Wait a minute, the government's playing us. Yeah, we should stop this. This is not right." So mm-hmm. they decided to unite, and that's when they wanted to do this big concert, the One Love concert. And they got Bob Marley to come back and do the concert. And one of the things they said in the documentary that's so interesting is that at one point he was dancing on stage, and he had brought. The two government heads of government together. He brought the yes. two drug lords together, and lightning flashed, and thunder re- went and right behind him. It didn't hit anybody, but people when they saw that thought he was God. They were just like, Ugh. and so that, yeah. But the saddest thing was after that concert, almost everybody involved in that concert was eventually murdered, hmm. and everything went back to the way it was. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there is. But that's politics in Jamaica at that time. So, you got, yeah. you probably got a, a better understanding of the politics going on. I didn't know anything, but at least I got a little starter set of what was going on mm-hmm. behind Bob Marley. Yeah. 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 There... yeah, he was more than just, you know, oh, smoke weed, man, Jamaica. You know, well, he's he like was, a myth just, to me. Oh, he's yeah, he's, he's really so much more involved. than that. He was really involved in politics mm-hmm. and in social issues, and you know, it, he's, he was a he was a happening guy. Uh, what happens next? So we have a, a vending machine. Now what? I think the vending machine <laughs> is a portal to a new dimension. The when he opens his mouth, they all go into the portal. Sure. If he's turning into a werewolf vending machine, I mean, come on. So, uh, 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 Otis vending, where vending machines, mouth is a portal to where? Well, it's a black hole, so it can go anywhere. And I think I've come up with some good ideas, so somebody else come up with something. Okay, so. What Otis what happened? Is- <laughs> no, it looked like it had what Otis happened. <laughs> yeah, what Otis happened? Uh, uh, <laughs> see, so Otis. Uh, Otis's mouth um, becomes a becomes new dimension an portal, inter- an interdimensional dimension. portal. That beckons everybody. Let's see. Uh... And then we get into, I guess, Rick and Morty territory. Where they end up in anywhere in the world, anywhere in the universe, and How any planet beckons? you could possibly think of. What? Beckons is B E C K O N. Oh, and yeah. Mm-hmm. C K O N. Beckons. That's how I would spell it. I'm probably going to have to run all this through, like, a uh, spell checker before I actually um, make it. Like, I, oh yeah, I, dude, you gotta let me clean up how it it sounds before you print it, please. Oh yeah, it's uh, it, it's. I mean, right now I'm just kind of doing this. Just yeah, to, it, to me, know it's just um what we're doing, and hands. I can look back at it and go, "What are they doing again?" And and people can uh and understand. But it yeah, we gotta it. clean it up before you publish hey, it. I don't know about you, but I know looking back at old Philo cartoons from when we did it on mtn without the episodes i was very confused at what i was looking at and going like which panel was which and which one went in which order and they were numbered sometimes Hmm. i we tried to be consistent with it after we realized we weren't numbering it and and oh yeah 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 so yeah sometimes uh okay so so the the uh portal beckons them forward into the portal so uh i gotta figure out how to draw this 
Um, Otis's mouth becomes an interdimensional portal that beckons to the group. So we're just going to have... I guess this is kind of the end of Otis, if they're going inside of him, right? You know, this... all, like, remember the movie Inner Space? Remember? Yeah. yeah. Dennis Quaid. God, I haven't yeah. seen that movie since I was a teenager. Martin Short. Yeah. Uh, Back when I... Martin Short was a viable love interest. Ah, uh, Robert Picardo's <laughs> in that movie. Meg yeah. Ryan. Yeah, Meg Ryan. Yeah, before she was, you know, the, I think that movie was before she was really big, right? No, I thought that was around the time of her bigness. Maybe. I'd have to check out the timeline, right? Because she did when Harry met Sally. That was her first huge thing. And then it was like, you got mail and Joe vs. Volcano. And what yeah. oh, was the other one? Sleepless in Seattle was the other big one. I just got to see how I drew him. Okay. That looks really good. I like how you did the vending machine. With his mouth little hands on the bottom yeah, yeah. well it, it's that's that's where they ended up was <laughs> yeah it was on the bottom mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah so we're we're gonna do this and then uh not that one not that line okay uh actually wait 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 let me do let yeah me it's a smaller nose it's like a jughead nose mm-hmm let me shrink the mouth, or shrink the, the nose and the eyes a little bit, and that'll make the mouth bigger. And and I'll, like... It's like a, he's like a TARDIS. He's like a human TARDIS. He, he's a, a he's vending a machine TARDIS. Yeah, let's see. And, and uh, we're going to have Philo... Ready to... Is it, is it like slider? They're going to start going to new places like sliders. I guess so. Uh, I loved that show when I was a kid. Me too. I was, yeah. I've been rewatching it. It's, I'm it's like, silly. Jerry O'Connell is such a heartthrob. I can't stand it. Oh, uh, uh, we have uh, VJ Skull. Well, well. Uh, who do we have here? Hi, VJ Skull. Um, I am Amber. Uh, this is Robin and Kay. And we are drawing uh, Philo. And you tell us what to draw. That is what we're doing here. And so, uh, yes. So we have the group is being beckoned. Let me um, do kind so of. So that's a vending machine. One of the characters has turned into a vending machine because of the full moon. Um, and we've discovered that the, vent the mouth of the vending machine is an interdimensional portal. And so our group of characters is now about to enter the body slash interdimensional portal of one of their friends. Uh, VJ Skull says to draw Robin. She seems nice. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, I guess you could draw me. I could. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe you're on the other side. Maybe you, you yeah. break the fourth wall. Um, yeah. yeah, let's try this. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. What's been going on in Minneapolis, uh, Miss K? Let's see. Uh, yes, no, like we do in Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, since the the George Floyd. Oh, that's nice. Uh, uh, VJ Skull says, "Don't worry, Kay, you are nice too." Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, uptown. Since you're saying about George Floyd, Uptown is like a shell of its former self. Oh no! Yeah, what a lot of. In fact, we were just <laughs> commiserating. The paper source store is closing down. No, <laughs> not the paper source. Paper source is closing down. There's damn little. Re there's damn little retail in Uptown and Lynn Lake as well. Wow. We did get a few new restaurant entries, but far more is pulling out of the neighborhood than coming in. Mm -hmm. I've, I've also and if been you drive hearing. Up if you drive up and then they didn't make things here's where our our mayor you know really really botched it uh, they're, they're remaking hennepin avenue okay again making hennepin avenue again which causes incredible undue hardship on the businesses that remain like yeah. uh, you try to survive without parking yeah there's no way they can park in front of your endeavor well, uh, uh, they took away all the parking in front of my apartment building. Another, Jeez. another friend of mine that lives there says that they're trying to force 
uh, Minneapolis to become like a biking, walking city by doing all this by like, like, oh, if there's no room for the cars, then people get rid of their cars, but people have cars, you know? It, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I can speak to that. Sure. In fact, if you make transit building, efficient, people will abandon their cars. But if well, you have a city it, transit, it's not going to happen. Right. Well, there there really aren't that many more buses. We are getting a new light rail system. However, they ran the light yeah, rail, see? the new one that they're building, through very wealthy end of town. Of course they did. Of course, of course they, they did. did. Are they going to ride the damn thing? No, because nope. they commute to work because, you know, yeah. with their cars. They always have before. You think they're going to change their habits now? Yep. Now, where that light rail needed to go was to Brooklyn Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right through North Minneapolis. Yeah, you know, and, and you don't even need to tear your houses down. You could just take it down like you know, Emerson did. But so uh, Dale uh Dale came back, says sorry, had to check in with CL. Uh uh that's Cinema Insomnia. Uh my cat is ex producer of a Cinema Insomnia episode. San Jose has a light rail, no one uses it. That's it. We do have uh, I've actually called. used it. I've used it a million years ago, but I've used it. I used it in nineteen 97. I used but it in 1997. In Canada. Canada, light rail is totally different. It, it works. Yeah. It's excellent. Yeah, but we also neglect it and it should really be more around. I think, I don't know, I think we'd use it more if it was around more. I mean, I've always used transit. Mm -hmm. I love BC's transit, the SkyTrain. It's excellent. I mean, they had bus strikes out there, and at least the, the uh, sky trains were still running, so we could still get around, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, but we have the light rail, which started out so incredibly beautiful. It was wonderful, and um, then COVID, and then after, it's the the local unhoused and druggies and drunks. Uh, start taking to the light rail because it wasn't really being monitored all that well and sleeping on it mm. and drinking on it and yeah you gotta have somebody to take care of it. it and it was I never knew in fact it still is I never know what kind of drama I'm gonna step into when I step into the light rail which I do fairly often and then I think it's just I step into a lot of stuff sometimes mm. you know mm. that just yeah, it, it's just, and also the junk that people leave behind. Yeah, you know, the empty liquor bottles. Um, you know, there'll be people smoking in there. There'll be people mm -hmm. smoking up in there. Uh, people playing. Yeah, the for the most part, our transit is run by the cities and the government. So ours is pretty clean. We're lucky yeah. that way. Denver has been cutting uh, the budget of the light rail here, but they also have been building more lines. Good. So, so they have like fewer trains on the lines, but they're building more lines. So it's like, I don't know which direction you're going. Uh, San Jose is a driving city. Buses and light rails work if you are good at pre-planning. Driving requires less thinking. Um, so I'm looking at the time. It is 8.28. Uh, oh, wow. And I flew. Yes. And I feel like this is a good stopping point because they're about Great. ready to step into a portal that beckons them. Um, I do have to add Otis's static over this because this is his static. And uh, yeah, like this, I think this was a really fun show today. I like the portal effect you got in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I was I was trying to go for a, a portally effect as it were. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it. We appreciate you coming on the show, Kay. Yay! It was, Let's see if it's I can... exciting have Let's another see person if can make it work with the mac next week yeah, yeah that's uh, a cool. the computer not yeah. the ipad oh shoot i i'm erasing stuff i shouldn't erase um yes i, I i've invited k screen. i've invited k back uh next week to be able to mm -hmm. draw panels um we're gonna figure this out uh we ran into technical issue today but i still really enjoyed having your uh company and and catching up and you know talking shop with you and uh making sure talking that philo history philo history uh, you can go to facebook and catch i think philo on channel 17 uh, and and read through some of the old episodes so. my 
my cat just threw my mouse off of my uh <laughs> <They're> <laughs> good my at thing. That. it's like oh, where did oh, it go here it goes yeah uh and it is a mouse yeah what did you expect you, you don't understand okay i just put my hand on my mouse and then he put his paw on top of my hand Aww. You, yeah you can't quite see it uh but he's let's see let's see if i can show him attacking me um because he's a good boy doing that yeah nom, 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 nom. yeah see mm -hmm. if i do this he'll attack me he'll lick me and attack me mm. yeah anyway um Too so, so uh thank you archimedes for for hanging out with us and then um uh this is me but i'm gonna say thank you Kay, for hanging out mm -hmm. with us uh tonight and robin i'm gonna put you up Bye. i will see you guys Bye. later this Bye. is uh uh what we've done and um yeah it it was it was a good show i thought and uh i'll see you next week bye